Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about panel modulation. Uh, we're going to talk about painting vehicles and how you can do panel modulation effects and or create lighting across your large flat surfaces. This is going to be, in case it's not obvious, this is going to be largely an airbrush tutorial. Um, this is one of those things that is, vehicles are one of those real reasons to get an airbrush, um, as this is just something that is far more difficult without an airbrush. So here I've just got everything primed in my, uh, my standard uh, uh, German Panzer Gray. And next up, what we're going to do is we're going to take some cold gray. Uh, so this is Vallejo Game Air cold gray. And we're going to put in some Vallejo airbrush thinner, a couple drops into our paint, mix it up. Obviously, when I mix my paint, we just backfill it. Get a little test on the back of my hand. Okay. Now, when we're doing panel modulation, we want to think about where our light's at. And in general, we want to match the panel. So here I have a, a line in the center. So the way I like to do it is a little bit of diffuse lighting, like the way it would actually, the way the lighting would actually fall. Because panel modulation is about creating pop on the vehicle. It's not entirely realistic lighting. So our goal here isn't to be completely realistic. It's to create something that's more visually interesting. We're exaggerating reality. But we still want a little reality in there. So I'm going to start out by just pushing some light toward the bottom of the kneecap. Because like this sits on the knee like this. So I want to make sure that my light comes down like that. So I'm just kind of pushing some out there. And then I'm going to come in and reinforce it on the sides. Okay? So what I get is something like that, right? Where it's forced toward the bottom. Same thing here where I've got this sort of center, I don't know, central groin plate, I guess. You know, we want to push lighting down toward the bottom, but then we're going to reinforce it on the sides. Okay? For plates like this, where you have more of like a central item, what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over and we're just going to spray like that at an angle. And create something like that, where the edges are still dark, but the center is lighter. Okay? So again, just pop it on the edge of our fingers there. And you'll notice the angle I'm operating at. Because I'm spraying almost perpendicular to the piece. Okay. We'll do the other leg here real quick. So again, we start by catching our light down at the bottom. And then we get in tight and we reinforce it on each side of the panels. Now where it's the most obvious is on these big top plates. Okay, so this sits like this on the top of the model. So we gotta think about where we want our light spots. Well, the back here is gonna be mostly metal because that's what these vents are. But so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some light first coming down like that. Right, so you can see how we get that modulation through directionality. Okay. So our brightest point is kind of there in the center. But then I want to build out my panels just a little bit. So I'm going to come in and reinforce that side a little bit. Reinforce that side where this is bumped up. We're going to reinforce that. And then we're going to call out this area back here a little bit. And then we'll push out these just a little bit like this, even though we'll mostly cover it up, having a little bit of it there to help. So you can see how what we get is that darkness along the ridges there. For things like your shoulder plate, this is where it gets a lot easier because these are sort of the clearest example of it where you have this line right in the middle. So here what we want to do is much like before, we're going to take it and we're going to rotate it around. Okay. We don't want to leave a lot of the black. 
right? But then we're gonna come in and right here and here, sort of on the center tops of our shoulder, we're gonna come in and we're gonna blow out those panels a little more. Nice and controlled, really lighten them up. You also wanna be thinking about what your final color is gonna be. So in this case, I know like my shoulder pads are gonna be white and stuff like that. So, you know, there's things I know about my color. So I'm going a little heavier on the gray than I would otherwise, because I'm gonna end up needing very, very little black there. So once that's all good to go, all my panels are properly modulated now. You notice when I, when I work on nights like this, I actually leave them in the format they're gonna be in on the night. I find it actually helps because then I can, uh, I always keep it in mind. Like it's always right at the top of mind of what shape this is gonna be in. It helps me think about the general lighting and stuff like that. Um, when I'm doing robots, I always leave the panels off. Never ever put your panels on your your uh, your robot if you can at all avoid it. In the case of things like Night Titans. All right. So now we're gonna go to straight white for our next step, and we're just gonna reinforce that. So what we're gonna do is this is just some. Uh, this is just some Game Air Dead White. And same thing. We just backfill it there to get it all nice and mixed up. Do a little test on the back of our hand. It's flowing well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reinforce the areas we really want to. So I'm going to come in very carefully across the bottom and then right across the edge and create our hot spots. Okay. If it's too extreme, you can just soften it with a little extra white. The white over the darker parts will basically give you a nice gray gradient, right? So you can soften it up just like that. Same thing here. We're gonna focus on the edge a little bit, focus on that edge. So we wanna blow out those edges and then reinforce them, right? Same thing once again. Here on these pieces, we're again just gonna pull the light toward the center. So we're gonna do the same thing we did last time. But really sort of blow it out there. And the reason I'm doing that angle, you see that leaves that nice shadow under the, uh, the like fleur-de-lis or whatever that symbol is that helps me keep my shadow later. So I'm directionally using the airbrush in the same direction the light is actually hitting where I can. That way my shadows are just built in for free. I don't have to work extra hard to then go back and put those in with black lining or something later. When it comes to the shoulders, again, same thing. So we're gonna gently go across there to get those like that, but then we're gonna come in, and since these are actually gonna end white, Split by the panels, we're gonna really reinforce that out. Right, so you can see how we end with that soft modulation effect. We'll do it one more time here. So we start with a nice gentle sweep across it. And then just Very gently, we build it up. Don't try to overspray and do it all at once. You don't need to overspray. You don't need to get your paint running and wet and gross. You can do it gently and get there. So with the top part, again, right, we're gonna spray in the direction of the light. And we're gonna go from a high angle, just down like that. Use the contour of the thing to help us out. You can see then how we get that. And then we're gonna come in and we're gonna modulate it out. Scoot that back, okay. So we'll push some hard white here on that edge. And on that edge. 
edge right here in the center of this panel. And that panel, really blow up that edge there, and there, a little bit toward the back there, back there, off of that edge, and off of that edge. So we can still heed reality where we have the light focused, but we can make it sort of an, we're going for an exaggerated reality. Again, that's the key. If it looks totally fake, I've seen some people when they do panel modulation, they just blow it like way out. They like make each panel super duper different. There's like hard black distinctions and stuff in between the panels. The problem is when you do that, it just ends up looking completely fake because you, it doesn't look like anything that's even close to reality. I like doing it with, you can do, in the undershade, I can afford to be over bright because we're gonna pull this back. Okay, uh, when we put on the next layers of paint, you'll see how we end up pulling it back. But what I'm gonna do now is let this all set because I really want this to dry and set. I don't want any of this soaking through. So I'm gonna give this several minutes to like completely set, clean out my airbrush, and I'll be back in a moment and we'll put some color over top of this and show how it looks and show how we reinforce that. All right, and we're back. So uh, you can see everything is dried and set. And one of the reasons I wanted to let it all really set is because I wanted to do, to mask off some areas here. So I've got like the inner part of the leg plate masked. I've got a little design of a triangle masked on this piece. And uh, I've got one of these legs masked off. Um, the reason I don't have the other one masked off is because, uh, well, I, I will here real quick, but all I do is I keep little pieces, you can see it's already been used, but I keep little pieces of my Tamiya tape next to me. So that way if I wanna mask real quick for a straight line, bing, bang, boom, I can just grab it, slap it on there, and then we've got that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull the two shoulder pieces and this leg piece out because they're not going to have any red on them because I'm gonna show you, like those are gonna be white, um, and I'm gonna show you instead how we go about uh, how we go about creating our red and reinforcing our panel modulation. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to reinforce some of our shadows in a color that's more complementary to doing red. Uh, doing a regular um, doing a regular sort of uh, zenithal with black to white and then doing red over top can produce some unfortunate results. <laughs> Basically, things can look pink or purple and that's because black isn't really black. Um, what I mean by that is black paint isn't actually usually made with black pigment. It's made with a bunch of mixes and usually relying on very dark blues. When you put blue together with red, you get purple. And I don't want purple. I don't want purple red, I want nice, hot, fiery red and the appropriate shadows of therein. So to correct for that, what we're going to do is we're gonna start with some Dollar Rowney FW sepia ink. This is a nice dark uh, brown tone. So we're gonna go ahead and get some of that. And then still a little bit of thinner in there. I always have a drop or two of thinner, even with inks, just because I, I, because it's just better for your airbrush. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna focus on these dark areas. And again, I'm gonna to try to use the model to my advantage. So I'm gonna take that and put that direction up like that, right? Light touches. Use the directionality of the model to my advantage. And we're going to reinforce some of those shadows, like down here at the bottom, right? But the goal is to reduce that black. Now, if I want, I can also come in here along the bottom of the door, give that a nice line up at the top here. And then we can go a little harder in the areas we want to be really dark. Okay, 
Again, I'm not using something to straight edge this. Like I could get out something and put a straight edge over the edge here to like really only get that area, but I don't want to do that because I want some of this color getting in other places. Um, I want to be a little bit indelicate with it. That way, that way the color doesn't look, again, so cartoonish as to be obviously these hard, sharp lines. Like what we're trying to do here again is hyper reality, not, not, not unreality. So again, what I'm doing is just hitting all the dark areas with that sepia. I bring it down into the gray because again, I want to get some of that tone down there. Okay. Now in this case, I actually, I'm gonna do the, uh, the other areas that are gonna be white here because the sepia actually works really well for them. So just very quickly, this isn't part of the red, but you know, I'll take my shoulder pad and here at the edge and right up the middle. Okay. Interesting thing about sepia tone is that you notice it when you put it over white. You don't really notice it otherwise. But you notice how there's like a slight greenness to the tone? Like, can you see that slight hint of green in there? There's another reason I'm doing that even under the red and under the white and why I'm using sepia. Because I want that slight green. Green is the complementary color to red. So hence, when you, like you can see some slight green tones in that sepia. See how that looks kind of green, even though that's just a brown color? By, when we do that, red's complementary color is green. By having a slight green tone underneath our red, we're actually gonna make it so it turn, when the red hits it, we're gonna get the complementary color over the top and it's gonna deaden that red. So as opposed to turning black or something like that, well, instead what we'll get is a nice dead desaturated version of that red, okay? Which is what we really want. We want the centers of the panels here to be really nice and hot and bright, okay? And we want the edges of the panels to be uh, or sorry, the, the you know, sort of sh shaded parts of the panels to just be desaturated, more of a dead red. Uh, if we want to think of it in terms of dead red and live red. This is true, by the way, you can, you can use this same trick with other colors too. Um, it's a little tough with blue panels because it's complimentary being orange. There's not a lot of colors out there that contain orange. Um, but you can always just mix a little straight in to like a dark version of that color. Like you can take a dark blue, mix a little draw a drop or two of orange into it and you'll get a very dead version of that color. So kind of a cool trick. All right, so now we're gonna move on to actually turning this stuff red. So we're gonna grab some whole red here. This is a very, very, very deep red. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reinforce our shadows more and we're gonna extend this out a little bit. So, again, we're just backfilling there. Test on the back of our hand. We've got a nice, simple flow there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is, again, we're gonna go ahead and focus on this darker area. But again, just like last time, I'm gonna go a little wide. And in fact, I'm gonna go a little wider than I did with the sepia. I wanna cover everywhere I did with the sepia, plus a little more, okay? So what I get is something like that. We're really gonna use the fact that we have that dual action on our airbrush. Okay, so I'm controlling both how far down I'm depressing the top and how far back I'm rocking it. And this is very gentle, light touches. Okay? All right. You can see that. We'll do the same thing over here. Obviously, the rest of the pieces are much easier than the back. <laughs>
Okay. So, now we got all those done. Okay. Now comes uh, a fun part where we alternate back and forth. So, our core center part of the panel is still quite, uh, it's still quite like cold white because it's still a very white gray. And if we just shoot a bright red over that, what we're gonna get isn't going to be what we want, okay? It's gonna look more pink than it is. Now we can do a couple glazes and that's fine, but then we'll just end up deadening our, uh, we'll end up deadening our red out because we'll end up sort of removing it. So instead, we're gonna get a little tricky here. I'm gonna actually switch airbrushes so I can do both of these back to back real quick and I'll show you easier on video. So now I have some just uh, Vallejo Model Air white, not the dead white. This is actually a really warm, creamy white, okay? So it's not actually a straight white color, it's quite yellow. So this is specifically 270, if you're curious. And again, we've got a couple drops of thinner in there because we always have a couple drops of thinner in there. By the way, if you manage to have multiple airbrushes, the best investment you'll ever make is a quick change for your airbrushes. So now I'm gonna take this white, this creamy white, and I'm gonna go ahead and go over the middle areas here. I'm gonna effectively reinforce those areas that I wanted to be and just really focus on those central areas that I want to get warmed up. Okay. Not a huge delta over our existing white. But that little bit of yellow makes a big difference when it comes to putting the red on. Okay. got that done. We're going to put a little drop of thinner in that. We're going to quick change the airbrush here and we're going to go back to our other one to do some red. And the reason that I'm keeping the white and didn't empty out the airbrush is because we're going to get sneaky here. We're going to do this to really get a nice bright uh, panel modulation. We're going to do a couple different passes of this. So our main color is a uh, Vallejo Model Air Ferrari Red. It's a really nice, bright red. It is very much a close color to the, the actual literal Ferrari Red. So I'm gonna put, let's say about four parts of that in there. And then I'm gonna grab my uh, Ink Tense Red from Scale 75. This is effectively high pigment ultra red ink. I'm gonna put two drops of that in there. So let's say two to one, okay? Then I'm gonna grab my Dowla Rowney uh, Scarlet, which is like a little bit of, has a little orange tone to it. You don't need all of these. This is just what I'm using. If you have a red ink, you can grab all these if you want. This is just Dowla Rowney FW Scarlet ink. Um, you can grab all these if you want. Certainly I find them all very useful for doing these kind of video, or for doing these kind of like bright reds, but again, not necessary. We wanna make sure this is nice and thin. So we add, we go, we add a little more thinner at the end then, really make sure that's, that's nice and mixed. Now, how do we know if it's thin enough? We test on the back of our hand. And we see what kind of red we get out of that. Hey, that's a nice bright red. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give everything a coat of this, all right? Nice and thin. Nice, even, smooth coat. It's very thin paint. 
We don't want to over apply or we will get coolage. I'm gonna let that dry and see how that looks. You can tell that right there still looks a little pink, right? Like it's not quite as rich red as we want. That's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let, I'm gonna set that down for a moment. I really wanna let that paint set, okay? Because colors don't always dry the same as they do right when they come out of the airbrush. So while I'm waiting, we're gonna give everything else a nice quick coat. The rest of this stuff obviously is much quicker and easier. Down. That little leg plate, I'll tell you what. I do wish they had made the leg plates on the lower part of the leg of these, this armature like a little bit bigger. Like, what is that? Very tiny. Okay. So now that we've, now that I've got it set, say, okay, I want this to be a little more red. It's not quite red enough for me. So I'm gonna come in, first of all, I'll get the size as well there. I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna do a nice coat right up and over it. And now, that second glaze basically from the airbrush look at how rich that looks right now we've got a nice rich red now i mentioned that i kept the white in my airbrush there was a reason for that we really want to get our panels a popping okay which i do then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change back to our white here real fast. Leaving my red ink in. I put some extra thinner in that in there. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna grab this. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give it a little blast right there in the middle. Right there on the edge. Right there on the edge. Okay. So we're just bringing those panels up, just creating some more hot spots. Do one on the knee here. We'll get the sides of this. Here we'll just kind of hit right for that center part. Okay. Now, let me go back to our red. I'm gonna add just another little drop or two of thinner to this because what we're doing is slowly, this is just like when you're painting with glazes. But again, the thinner we make it out of an airbrush, the more dangerous we get. We gotta really have control of our spray or we'll get pooling and everything will go south. So now, come back over that. Some nice, confident, straight along strokes. We're not letting the brush stand still. And there we go. What we get is a really nice modulation effect. Everything still looks red, 
We haven't gone into like cartoonish, uh, cartoonish territory, at least not by my standards. By the way, the, the standard of what counts as cartoony and what counts as realistic is probably going to be very different in something like 40k versus something like uh, if you're doing a World War II historical tank. <laughs> uh, historical people tend to like much more sort of grounded realism. I like what I call exaggerated realism. It's more fun to me that way. You can do it however you like. The darker you make it, the more you push that white, the more you get. But there you go. That's it. And you can see how now that panel just has this wonderful pop to it. Now, what I'll do from here over at the table is obviously I'm going to go in and I'll, black, you know, I'll, I'll line all these lines out, all these little vents, make those dark. By making the lines dark and that kind of stuff, I'll actually make the rest of this seem even brighter. Okay? But there you go. That's the basic trick, folks. That's panel modulation. You can see how you can use this on, like I did this here on the hood of this uh, Knight Armager, but you can do it on, you know, a vehicle of any size. You can do this with tanks, planes, anything like that. It's a great way to make your vehicle really stand out. It's not complicated. It's a pretty simple, it's a pretty simple trick. Uh, so there you go. I hope you liked that. Uh, if you did, hey, give it a like. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Uh, there's always more to come every week here on the channel. Uh, but as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one. If you've got uh, if you've got suggestions for future hobby cheating videos, feel free to drop those down in the comments. Always looking to answer any questions that we've got. But as always, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.